It's been a volatile year for cybersecurity stocks. The enthusiasm around artificial intelligence technology has been tempered by economic realities as businesses grapple with managing the cost of the digital transformation. And an outage caused by CrowdStrike's faulty software update showed how disruptive and costly a cyber incident could be to the global economy. Wall Street sees cloud-based platforms as the way forward for growth in the cybersecurity market. And Palo Alto Networks is banking on a platformization strategy that would give customers a broad range of security solutions and increase Palo Alto's total addressable market. So what trends are in focus for Palo Alto as it looks to maintain its position in the cybersecurity marketplace? And how can businesses prepare for the proliferation of threats as AI adoption takes off? On this Growth Story Spotlight, we talk to Sam Rubin, Vice President and Global Head of Operations of Unit 42 at Palo Alto Networks, to discuss AI's role in cybersecurity and key themes for the industry in the year ahead. Sam, thanks so much for being here today. Great to be here, Alexis. Now, looking at 2024, were there any big surprises in the cybersecurity landscape that jumped out to you? And I guess what I want to know is, you know, what keeps you awake at night? Sure. Yeah. As we look back at this year, I think what stands out to us is the extent of disruption that we're seeing in these major cyber attacks that are impacting large global businesses. Um, we've seen companies across industry from healthcare, manufacturing, retail, uh, all get hit by these major cyber attacks that are bringing to them to their knees and impacting their ability to serve their customers. So as I look back at this year, it's that disruption theme. And uh, as I should say, Alexis, uh, Unit 42, we are the threat intelligence and incident response team at Palo Alto Network. So we see a lot of these incidents. We're helping these organizations respond and recover. So then how do you advise your customers then and you know what can businesses be doing to shield themselves from the proliferation of these attacks? Yeah, so what we say and when we help them respond and recover, um, we see what technology capability gaps that they have in their environment. And consistently we see that uh, a couple of themes emerge. One, they don't have visibility across their environment, across their attack surface, the systems that are exposed to the internet. And so they need to get their arms around what they have exposed. And number two is the complexity of the systems that they have that makes it really hard for their security teams to see when something's going on, never mind preventing it, detecting and responding. So get a platform that allows you to simplify and get your arms around what's going on on the security side. You said platform and uh, that platformatization has really been a key part of Palo Alto's strategy here in the competitive field. So can you talk a little bit about that approach and how, you know, the idea that having that kind of cohesive uh, option uh, benefits your customers? Absolutely. So cybersecurity is hard. Right, it's really hard for those IT and security practitioners who are on the front lines, whether it's my team doing response or the security operations team in the company. They've got um, users to protect, they've got data, they've got applications, and never, they have these adversaries who are trying to break in and trying to disrupt the business. And so when we come in and we do the response, we're often seeing that the evidence is in the logs, it's in the data that they had. So they need to get to a place where it's easier to use all of the information at their disposal. And so that's what the platform does. When you put together network security capability, cloud security capability, when you're protecting the endpoint and you give your security operations teams that capability, it enables them to better protect their enterprise. And I, I want to bring in uh, AI technology because, as we know, it's it's AI everything right now. And how do you see uh, that tool maybe playing into how you're helping customers? And you know, on the flip side, how is AI uh, escalating the threat that they face? Sure. So we are in a bit of an AI arms race. I'm sure you, you've seen and and talked to others about. So. 
on the um, adversarial side, how are the threat actors using it? Um, there's there's good news and bad news. The good news is that it's more, I would say, um, evolutionary in their tactics and capabilities than revolutionary. The threat actors are absolutely using it, but what it's doing is it's speeding up their ability to attack our networks, how quickly they can get in, and then after they get in, what they can do inside our networks. That's what we're seeing on the Gen AI side. We do expect this to continue. On the defense side, uh, what we can do as responders, it really enables us to get our arms around this fundamentally big data problem, right? If you think about a global enterprise with thousands of endpoints, um, data applications, global operations, it creates billions of events a day and humans just can't process that level of information, but AI is really good at that. So it helps us find the signal and the noise and then it helps us prioritize what they need, what we need to respond to as humans. So when we have this AI at our disposal in our security capability, we can focus on what's important. And have you uh, noticed or gotten any feedback from your customers on how AI is changing uh, workflows on their end? Yes, absolutely. So Palo Alto Networks has a phenomenal set of AI capabilities in our security products, whether that's our network security uh, applications or our security operations platform. And when we see customers adopting this, it's transforming their ability to stay ahead of the threat. Um, they're seeing and getting their arms around a bigger set of data at the top, but having to focus on less at the bottom when things are filtered out by the AI, uh, by automation and by detection rules. So it's really transforming their ability to protect their environments. And you know, as we've seen these threats emerge, uh, they're not only external, uh, we saw the amount of damage that could be done with the CrowdStrike outage uh, that occurred this summer. And that, that was due to an operational issue, a, a software update. So what are some of the lessons your team learned from that incident and how is Palo Alto protecting their own infrastructure? Sure, so first and foremost, Palo Alto did not have any impact as a result of the CrowdStrike outage. But you know, in terms of lessons learned and just operating protocols, it really is about two things, the software development lifecycle, how you are building updates, and then secondly, how you are shipping them or sharing them with your customer base. And so we have a number of protections and protocols that we have in place, uh, regression testing, quality assurance, and, and incremental scaled deployments. So something like what happened with CrowdStrike would not happen with Palo Alto Networks. And Sam, we also are in an election year this year, and we saw what a hot button issue election security became in 2020. And, you know, there's not only uh, misinformation that voters have to deal with, but there's, you know, the very real threat of election interference from not so good actors. So I, I'm curious to get your thoughts on election 2024 and maybe some of the security challenges presented on that end. Yeah, when we think about this year, 2024 and elections, I think um, it's the largest um, election period in history with, I think it's over 4 billion people potentially going to the polls globally. And so this does create um, an incredible risk for us. Um, in the United States, we have seen um, state-sponsored adversaries come after um, to spread misinformation and disinformation to sow distrust in the in the election process. So this is something that's happening. And then the specter of Gen AI, which makes deep fakes um, and makes spreading that uh, misinformation so much easier, does sort of raise the specter of this threat. So it is absolutely something that we're keeping our eye on, um, and it's something to be wary of um, as a, as a voter out there. Yeah, and as you consult companies too, what can people do to maybe uh, help spot uh, some of these deep fakes or, or things that are maybe just fishy? Yeah, you know, another campaign that we're seeing out there, and this is impacting consumers more than businesses, but there's more and more of these deep fake campaigns that are leveraging known personalities like using Elon Musk's video and turning it into a deep fake to promote um, a fraudulent, for example, Bitcoin or crypto uh, campaign. So this is becoming more and more prevalent as threat actors or uh, adversaries are using um, this deep fake technology in terms of what we can do. You also have to verify 
um, what, what you're looking at. You have to be careful. You need to check. Is it coming from a reputable source? Is it something that you can trust? And be vigilant uh, with what's going on out there. All right, Sam. Well, thank you so much for your insights today. We really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you so much.